morning everybody today i'm doing my full testimony the full thing um uh i want to thank jesus for for another day uh, thank you for my family thank you for everything that you've given me so far thank you for saving me from the pits of hell um thank you for restoring my life and 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 crushing all the spirits that were tormenting me and, and all the bad things that were tormenting me at one point um i'm just grateful to be alive and 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 every day that I'm living now is a gift. I should be dead. I should be dead long time ago. Um, so, so every every day that that I get a new day it is a gift, and I'm not gonna take it for granted. I'm gonna share my full testimony today because I, I believe there's power in testimony. And beforehand, you know, I just want to give God all the glory, all the praise. The only way to heaven is Jesus Christ. No other religion. No other, you know, no other person. Uh, Jesus is God. Jesus came and saved us. He died on the cross for us. And he rose on the third day. I believe it. I declare it. It's true. It's the truth. The truth will set you free. Um, Jesus is the truth, you know. And, 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 and it's the relationship with him, not the religion. You could be any religion and do works, 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 works. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then, then it's all for, for nothing, you know? He wants that relationship. Um, he's your heavenly father. Pray to him every day. Pray to him. He listens. Be obedient. Be obedient. A relationship means, you know, um, that you know him. By knowing him, you know that he loves you. But it also gives you gives you a, a willingness to, to be obedient, you know? That's, that's how I feel. Um, I feel like like we still stumble and fall but we don't willfully do things that that will want our heavenly father to to you know um get mad or anything like that and and if we do stumble and fall you know we got to repent and it's got to be a 180 change um it's quite simple there's there's grace but it's it's not unlimited grace you know you have to build up the rapport with him first have a relationship and then you'll know, like, you'll know in, deep in your heart when you receive the Holy Spirit, it'll guide you, you know, right from wrong all the time. Right from wrong all the time. You'll know, you'll make a conscious decision when you're making a bad choice and you'll feel it in your heart. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He can, He convicts us. So there's no excuse. After, after you experience the love of Jesus Christ, you know right from wrong all the time. Uh, but let me get into this testimony. All right, where to begin? Where to begin? So I was born in, in Mexico, Michoacan, Mexico. Um, you know, I, I have a family of six, um, four brothers, two sisters. I was the last one. Uh, we're all two years, four years apart. Um, my oldest being in his 40s, me being in, in my uh, late 20s now, 28. Um, when I was a kid, you know, I... I I was the only, um, I was the last one, so I don't know what that means, whatever you guys want to call it, I was the accident, the unexpected surprise, whatever, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was, I was the last child, and, and you know, I didn't experience much life in Mexico, uh, we came over here legally, you know, at four years, I was, I was about four years, four to five years. So I don't remember much from Mexico, but I remember coming here and being excited, you know. Um, I learned English in like two weeks because I was young, so so I was like a sponge. I absorbed everything. I started kindergarten, you know, it, it was cool, and and I had a good I had a good childhood. I had a really good childhood. Everything was fun. My my brothers, we all had a good time. It seemed like like the most unified we were where when we barely came, you know, everybody loved each other, everybody treated each other right. It was all nice and gravy. We, we were just a, a, a happy family. I mean, we, we came and we were sharing um, a house with, with my uncle, I believe, and, and, my, and some other tenants, but, but we were living fine, you know? Like, like, to me, that's never been a problem. Living with a lot of people, it's never been a problem. It's, it's more of a, you know, it's, it's more of a love and understanding type thing, you know? Um, 
I seem to appreciate a lot of things more when when we didn't have much. I mean, we still don't have a lot. Don't get me wrong, but but you you seem to appreciate life a little bit more when you had less. You know, you you seem to love each other more because you didn't have that distraction of those little video games of of like Pokemon cards, all that stuff. When when you just had your brothers and sisters and you just played with them all day, like you know, you, we would go to go outside play uh, soccer, basketball. Things were way different back then, you know. So so growing up, I had no issues. The only the only thing I could see that kind of messed me up a little bit was was seeing a Playboy magazine, a Playboy magazine at a very you know young age. And since then, I. I I believe, sorry, I believe that kind of messed me up a little bit because a child is not supposed to see those type of things. And since then, I, I believe, you know, I, I probably got a, a lustful spirit or, or, you know, some type of spirit from that porn magazine or that Playboy magazine because I wasn't supposed to see it. And this was under 10 years of, of 10 years old, you know, that's not supposed to happen. Um, so at a young age, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know discerning spirits or anything like that, but I knew I had a good heart. Always, always had a good heart. I was, I was kind of a softy, you know, I was kind of a softy. I would cry easily, this and that. My, my mom had me really spoiled. And, and I think that's what led to me being so soft. Like I would just cry. My dad would scream at me. I would cry and, and it would be, I was just, I was a soft kid. You know, I was a soft kid uh, growing up. And, and I had all the attention from my mom, you know, all the attention from my mom, very good mother. Um, and my dad was, was always working, you know, and, and he was, he was making that bread for the family. He, he was, he was, he was the man, you know, he was the head of the household. So, so the, the father figures that I had were, were basically my brothers and, and my mom basically, you know, um, I'll speed up a little bit. My childhood really, really was was awesome. I got super chubby when I was like in third grade. A lot of a lot of people see my my pictures, you know. Um, I was super chubby. Um, I still love life. Um, we didn't really have extravagant things. I, I would say I was I was a humble kid. Uh, I had way more than than my brothers and sisters had when they were in Mexico. Um, but, but that's just the life that, that, that we, we came here, we came for a better life. And I did have a lot of better opportunities and, and a lot of uh, better things um, that at some point I did uh, misuse and, and miss, um, and miss, missed opportunities. I had a lot of opportunities here and, and I take full accountability. I could have been uh, so much better, but you know, we're still here alive and well, thankful to, to Jesus Christ. Um, so zoom in, um, in middle school, um, throughout my childhood, I, I love basketball. I love basketball. I love playing basketball. We played soccer outside, everything, you know, I was very, um, very athletic, I guess, not in the sense of physics, physically yet, not yet, but, but I was into athletics and I was still chubby, like fit, uh, Third, third to fifth grade, I was super chubby. My mom got me into like some fat camp program. <laughs> it was like a fat, um, it's not a, yeah, it, I guess it's like a fat camp program. And I started losing weight. So by the time I got into middle school, I was, I was pretty slim. And then I got into basketball, lost so much weight in basketball. So I was, I was now, you know, pretty skinny, um, seventh and eighth grader. And and the weight loss uh, dramatically um, increased my confidence and everything. And and at an early age, I experienced um, I lost my virginity at 13. Um, total total um, lack of knowledge, lack of direction, lack of of God. You know, totally opened myself up for for what was to come. At 13, you're a child. You're not supposed to be having sex. You're not supposed to be thinking about anything other than school. You know, you, uh, uh, praying, all this stuff. You know, so so mentally, 
I messed myself up, you know. I take account I can take accountability accountability. Um at 13, no child should have sex. That's what I think messed me up so bad at 13. Given, you know, at in in 6th grade, I was having girlfriends and everything like that, but but it was nothing, you know. It was it was just like a kiss, peck on the cheek. And then it got intense. It got intense when I was in in middle school because, you know, um I lost my virginity and 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 I think that really messed me up that opened the the gateway for all these spirits and and perversion and 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 lust and and masturbation and all these things because before that I was just having playing basketball you know it was, it was all gravy everything was was cool I was just being a kid but then you know I grew up too fast and I think that messed me up in the long run and that's why um, God says in, in the Bible, you know, when you marry someone, it, you marry someone because a, a sexual act is, 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 a, is a covenant between wife and husband. Anything outside of, of, of matrimony, you're cursing yourself. You're inviting demons to attack you. You're inviting possession of yourself because you're doing something in the legal rights of the enemy. And, and there's nothing um, more intense than physical sin. When you're premed premeditating to do a sin, you know? So physical sin attacks your body, attacks your mind, everything, everything. You're, you're being inhabited by, by all these things. Instead of having Jesus in your mind, body, and soul, you're replacing it with this you know physical act this fleshly act of sex so so that kind of messed me up i kind of i was still into basketball i was i was i got really good but then i got into you know masturbation and and like long periods of time pornography and 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 up until up until you know high school that was that was a big issue I think a, a big reason why I got a lot of acne was because, you know, I think it could have been, it could have been um, from all this stimulation from masturbation and, and watching porn and all this, you know, nastiness that I was doing. I got, I had so many pimples. It was disgusting. I, I had to go to the dermatologist. They gave me pills, all this stuff, which messed me up even more, you know. Um, it was some pills that, um, they were quite damaging. Um, but anyway, as you see now, it's pretty clear, but back then, you know, I was just, um, I was either playing basketball, eating like a pig, um, watching porn or, or fapping off, you know, just being real with you. And, and that led to, to the destruction of myself because lust has no end. Lust has no end. You begin lust and then it, it just seems like it keeps going and going and you're not you're never satisfied um so i mean junior year was was uh was a pretty uh bad and good year it was it was um i had so many girlfriends in in junior year um i had so many girlfriends and and it was it was kind of devastating you know i had i had no real commitment i had no real commitment that's what that's what porn leads you to lack of commitment you don't value the other person now don't get me wrong I wasn't having sex left and right with with all these uh, girls given I was in high school you know um, it wasn't like that it was more of a of a relationship relationship type thing I mean I would uh, on occasion but it wasn't uh, like every single one no 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 it was more of a, a commitment thing I wouldn't commit to one and then I'd move to the next and the next and the next and and that I felt like I didn't like that about me in junior year you know and and I ended up um, I ended up um, getting someone pregnant my first uh, baby's mother um, she got pregnant at a very early age, you know, uh, I believe 17, she was 17, I was 17, about to be 18. And that led me to, um, I was working at the time, I was working at Denny's, you know, being a server on the weekends, 
making a little bit of money you know it's not too too extravagant nothing like that but but i had something saved up and and you know we got ready for for this baby i was i was surprised but but i was ready you know since a, since an early age at least you know at least at least that time i i i found it in my heart you know like hey we're gonna have this baby we're gonna do this and then reality set in um we had some problems and and it was um you know it is what it is we i was immature i was i was young i was i was still riddled with with all these um spirits of lust perversion all this stuff like like it was just not a good thing and and we weren't married like i said anything you do outside of marriage seems to get cursed or seems to break down and fall apart that's why marriage is so important please if, if you have that person marry them because i'm telling you there's there's nothing but curses there's nothing but but demons that will come in and just tear your family apart so given that um i was young you know i was very aggressive very um I guess you would say very unknowledgeable yet you know um we we were together for for at least a year year and something um i don't quite remember but but i remember um separating when my baby was eight months old i got i got real really fat again um i was super fat when when we broke up and you know, um, it was it was I believe my decision to separate, and and I was just I was in a I was just really really chubby at the time, so so I took you know every day every day I would just start running, running 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 running, and then I got to a point where I had like a six pack like every day so so i just got so much confidence out of this breakup and and out of this um you know uh really i guess you would say immature relationship very um um in a way it, w it was it in a way it was just we were young and and we didn't know what we were doing and and it just didn't work out you know um, I didn't have God at that time um, I did not I did not know how to be a man yet um, I'm barely learning how to be a man now so so you know I, I take accountability um, and I take I take accountability you know I left and and that's what it is you know life moved on uh, life moved on given now <clears throat> I was back at my parents because okay so I moved in she moved in with me first um, then we moved in with her mom um, uh, in an apartment and then I left there uh, given you know I wasn't a very good person uh, uh, it was it wasn't the best ideal it wasn't the best situation uh, but it's the past it's it's done and over with you know uh, there was there was things that were said there was things that were done and 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 i moved on from that um i live in the present um you know i didn't have god's direction then i have him now uh everything is forgiven no grudges no nothing uh, that's what god does i have a i have a, a good heart you know uh nothing in my heart uh no grudges no nothing just the betterment of my son, you know. I love my son, you know. My firstborn, I love you. Um, your dad, you you were one of the reasons why your dad, um, you were sent by God to save my life. You know, my other son as well, both of my children, they were sent to me by God to save my life. And that's beautiful. Um, I just, you know, I can't imagine my life without uh, my children. Uh, given, 
when we separated, I wasn't a very good dad. I'm being honest, I was not a very good dad. I had this, you know, I was in the gym all the time. I was into myself so much. You know, I was getting so much attention. I was getting so much attention. I had a sick, you know, I had a six pack here and there. Um, I was just super, super into myself. It, it got to a point where I was posting selfies every every day like five selfies a day some of you some of you are i know you remember you even told me i was annoying and i said i don't care <laughs> but that's what god does you see i was <laughs> i used to post so many selfies so many videos of me working out bah, bah, bah. you know like 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 five ten uh pictures a day you guys remember come on i deleted them all because it, it was way too much and it's and it, and it was very demonic actually you're very into yourself uh, which led me back uh, to different things that that are very destructive so now i was single i was a single dad at the time i think i was going to college yeah, I was going to Heald College. <laughs> Another big mistake, Heald College. Come on. Uh, they closed down and everything, but it, it is what it is. Um, I was going to Heald College, and I was kind of a loner, you know? Like, like I don't know if, if I've never really ever fit in anywhere. Like, in high school, I was I was semi-popular until, like, my senior year because of the, the whole thing that, you know, I think my girlfriend was pregnant, and then everybody, like, all of a sudden, like, I had, like, like like rabies or something you know my senior year was was pretty lonely um in college i don't know why you know like <clears throat> I, I even thought to myself like you know what like i got buff i got everything like like why aren't people like not talking to me but i think i think it was me you know it was me i probably gave off this persona like don't talk to me i'm i'm better than all of you you know which is pretty bad So given, um, I went back to my, you know, promiscuous ways. I was, I was, uh, I was back into my non-commitment ways. Um, I would do, uh, you know, I would smoke weed. I would do drugs. Um, very light, very light. I was like 19 at the age, you know. I would drink, you know. I would, I would smoke. Oh goodness, yeah, I think that's when I started smoking cigarettes. Yeah, like 19. I, wor I was working at Denny's, uh, just smoking graveyard shift. That's what we would do, we'd get out, smoke, have a cigarette in grave shift and, and just go back inside. And it got into a bad habit. I would smoke cigarettes day in, day out, day in, day out. It got to the point where I was smoking like two, two cases of cigarettes a day and, and I was still running I was still running, um, I was still running every day, which, which surprised me, you know, I would run like an hour, an hour and a half a day, and I was still smoking, so, so I thought it was fine at the moment, um, but, you know, it, it was, in my, in my singleness, I did, I did a lot of dumb things, I encountered a lot of dumb stuff, um, I did a lot of uh, regretful things and and just I got more and more into like perversion you know like like porn and all this stuff like I was masturbating again like <laughs> you know what I mean that's why the, the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn you know and and at the time um, it seemed like an easier option uh, to to be uh, sexually um, involved with with transgender people, you know, and and that's what that's what started uh, this this homosexual um, spirit that I had for for so long, and and it was just it was not a, a everyday thing. I don't know how how you say I take full accountability for my actions. Like I said, I take full accountability, but if if it weren't for me being uncommitted me not looking at porn and me not seeking lust lustful things i wouldn't have done none of that so the first encounters were were you know uh, transgenders 
fuck, I'm just being real, you know? And and now I think I think and look back and, and that's that's disgusting to me, you know, but but that's 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 what lust leads us to. It leads us to do things that we don't want. It leads us to do things that that we really have no knowledge that, that God doesn't want us to do. And I'm being real with you, I did it. I take accountability, it's done, you know? And that's what, what gives me knowledge now to, to give to you, you know, like, hey, I, I experienced that, I did that. Like, let's break it together. Let's break this chain. Let's break these spirits. Because the devil can only tempt you. The devil can only tempt you. It's your decision. You know what I'm saying? So I take full accountability. That's what led, that's what I think led this open portals to everything, you know? And, and one of these... Uh, in a different, you know, in a different time, uh, in a, in a, and I guess you 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 could say a, a, in a homosexual experience, I was led to um, to meth, crystal meth, and that's where the beginning of chaos just begins. Mm -hmm. That was the introduction. And, and it was not cool. Meth ruins your mind, ruins your body, ruins your soul. It ruins your, your, your physical, it ruins your teeth, it ruins your, your commitment, it ruins your life. It makes you want to take your life. It makes you want to... Um, It's it's just such a horrible spirit. It's such a horrible spirit of addiction. I'll get into more a little later of, of why it's so so horrible. But but let me let me let me get to the point now where I met my wife, my girlfriend, at the time. It was it was a glimpse of hope. It was, it was the ray in my life. I want to commit. I want to commit. I want to commit. <sighs> battling so many demons that she didn't know yet. I was battling so many demons. But I just knew this girl was for me for some reason. I wasn't with God yet. I didn't know God personally yet. I've had bits and pieces of him, but I knew this girl was for me, you know? This girl was for me in, in a way of, of she was going to be there for me in difficult times. And I didn't even realize it yet, you know? We had such an amazing first two years. The first two years were so amazing. I give glory to God for... for for letting us experience so many good things, so many good adventures, so many good things, but we were still outside of marriage, leading to curses, leading to demons having legal right, all via through me. Still me, you know? Um, it got to the point, um, so so let me let me just explain our relationship was 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 100 it was it was awesome you know there was some um dishonesty on my part for sure that's 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 a given um uh but but it was amazing amazing i i thank god you know even if 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 we were to split up today i'd be thankful for god for the years that that she's spent with me i love you um I love my wife, you know, and 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 thank I'm thankful for for everything, you know, and it takes a real man man to come in here and, and say this because um, legalistically, from the Bible, if someone um, if someone commits adultery, you have the the legal right to divorce, you know, and I'm I'm always I'm always. I'm always grateful. You know, like I said, we worry about today. 
today I have my wife, tomorrow is never promised. Um, but, but as long as I have my wife with me, I love her and I'm going to treat her right. And I've been treating her right. But, but let me get back to this testimony because, because it, it's going to save some marriages. It's going to save some people in drug addiction, in, in homosexuality, in, in promiscuity. Because we've all been, I've been through all that in Jesus' name. I'm coming here live today telling you I was through that. And it was my mistake for going into a relationship this serious, still battling so many demons. So many demons. So, so let me get honest with you right now. Let me get honest with you right now. You know? Meth took control of my life and the pregnancy of my wife. Can you believe that? That's why I always say I was a piece of poop. I was so excited for my baby, but 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 this this spirit would always come. Hey, let's do drugs. Hey, in 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 those happiest times that I, that I've that I've managed to be. Hey, I'm here. Temptation has arrived, you know. And me, I was still young. I was still young. I was still young. I was so naive. I was so full of demons. I would, I rejected God so much that I was, come, you know, let it be. I had that mentality. I never, I never opened the Bible so much to know that that there's power in commitment. That there's power in marriage. That there's power in faithfulness. What what the world has of now, there's so much of of, of fakeness. That real is no longer real. So I'm being real right now. You know, I let myself to destruction while my wife was pregnant. Can you believe that? What a piece of dung I was. You know, I was so mean to my wife. I, the girl, my girlfriend at the time, I was so mean to her. I would neglect her. I would reject her. I would, I would be, I would not go to, over to see her. I would. The worst possible explanation of a man that you could think of, that was me. The worst. The worst. The worst possible man that, that you could think of that, that I could eat was me. And you know what? Um, it was my fault. It was my fault. Like I said, the enemy comes... And he shows you these things and it's up to you it's up to you what are you gonna decide I had nothing but but anger pride a uh, perversion lust in my heart that I didn't want to let none of that go I had a stronghold uh, cigarettes alcohol meth a uh, weed um, I wasn't really a big weed person but but meth you know like it takes a stronghold over everything about you um zoom in you know uh fast forward a little bit um i was a piece of trash to my wife while she was pregnant um given we had our baby i was so happy when he was born i would go in 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 bits and pieces of 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 being a good person just for the straight fact that i had a son Never the fact because I had God yet. There's so much hurt. There's so much pain that I brought to my wife, my girlfriend at the time. That, you know, it just it just haunts me sometimes. But, but but I've I've found Jesus and and I know. Um, that he has a plan for me and, and I know that that, that life life is, is a decision life is a decision can you choose right or choose wrong now I'm being led by the Holy Spirit I have that um, edge now so so fast forward I have I have my child um, I see him you know sometimes but but I still have this this heavy addiction this heavy addiction 
heavy addiction, destroying my life, destroying me. And, and like I say, it would go bits and pieces, bits and pieces. One time I got, I got so, One time I got so, one time I got so depressed, you know, out of all the hurt that I did, out of all the things that I did, um, sleeping around, um, being promiscuous, whatnot, um, endangering my, my, the, the welfare, the, the health of my, my wife, of me, um, I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take it anymore. I wanted to kill myself. I wanted to kill myself. I went to... These next few parts of my life were, were where the enemy had the largest stronghold in my life. I don't know. There were so many suicide attempts. One being when I left, I left for work. I worked a graveyard shift. I left. Um, and my plan was to overdose on meth. So I never showed up to work. I never showed up to work. I never showed up back home. I was gone. I ran, you know. I I would go I would go to hotel places. Hotel um And people, people make fun of that till this day. Oh, you were with somebody else. Uh, sometimes I was, sometimes I wasn't. The darkest times, I wanted to kill myself. I was alone. And I remember this one time, I was in a hotel, ready to, ready to die. I had, I had filled the, the tub, and, and I said I was going to drown myself. And I couldn't. I couldn't. I didn't have the balls. I was such a, I was such a, a effeminate man that I didn't even have the balls to kill myself yet. And I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to God that He didn't. I remember that day being so zoned out. I saw, I saw a big demon right next to my bed. I thought nothing of it. I thought nothing of it. Didn't believe. Didn't didn't even want to believe I saw it I said I'm just hallucinating whatever someone who's not in their right mind doesn't say I'm just hallucinating you know I think drugs is a portal to see uh, the other realm for some reason but all I would see is demons and and these hallucinations like they only happened when, when I was super drugged out. And why would you only see demons? This is what I don't get. Like, I think they manifest through drug use. I could be wrong, whatever, but I know what I saw, I know what I feel, I know I'm in my right mind. Um, crazy is what crazy does, you know? always pay attention to someone's behavior not not what they've been through not what y you've heard always pay attention to their actions not what you've heard so so this one time i try to kill myself and it failed my wife found me she took me to to the to the hospital you know nothing happened i went home it was like nothing 
that was that was a generational curse that I had. I would run away from my problems and not face them. Is it, that's not healthy at all. See, so the next time, um, I went to. I drove. I, I I stopped at I believe Santa Anita, got a hotel there, and I was ready to also kill myself this time. I think these were uh, these were I don't I don't remember the timeline to be exact. I'm sorry, um, but this was my my second suicide attempt. Uh, this one was scarier. This one was close. This one was close, people. This one was close. Um, but every time I was in this deep depression, in this deep um, demonic attack, I would always look at pictures and and my heart would just melt because I was leaving these boys, I was leaving these boys people to the world. And I knew, I knew that I wasn't being a man because I was gonna let them face the world what I had faced without a dad. That's how effeminate, that's how a piece of dung I was. That that I was willing to, to give up and let my children go through whatever they were going to go through. And that's not right. That's not right. That's the lack of God. That's the lack of the word. That's the lack of, of commitment. That's the lack of, of being a man. You feel me? So I was on my way to, to Vegas. I had done so many horrendous things, you know, I, I, I wrote a note to my wife, I, I did so many heinous, horrendous things, I don't really want to get into detail, um, nothing, nothing violent, I've, let me just get this straight, I've never been violent, I've never been violent, my demons have manifested sexually, my demons have manifested through anger, never violent, never violent, all right? And, and that's something I appreciate of myself. You know, even in my, even in my dark moments, I like, I'd never manifested it through violence. And that's, that's something that has always, you know, sparked my, my interest, my interest, because I've always been, you know, I've always been, um, I've always known I had a good heart for some reason, not even in my mess, not even in my drugs, not even in anything like like for me it was more of a I was filling that void that Jesus Christ is supposed to have in your in your heart I I was filling that void with with being promiscuous and 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 not having commitment and all this you know and now that you have now that I have Jesus now that I know that he loves me I can love others you know you can't love someone else unless you love yourself I didn't have no love for me I I wanted to kill myself. Come on. Uh, when I was going to Vegas, I stopped at Santa Anita. You know, I was doing, I was doing bad things. I stopped at Santa Anita, and then I went to Vegas. <sighs> I went to Vegas, and and I remember. I I think this could have saved my life. Um, I had taken I had taken my son's piggy bank money. I had taken um, all my stuff like all my money and gone to Vegas that's how much of a piece of dung I was but but I was as I was getting there I was buying I was buying a little pipe and um, out of my heart I just said I'm gonna give this this homeless lady or, or man um, I don't remember to be exact what it was I'm gonna give this person the last thing I have in my wallet I gave them what I had in my wallet I go back to the room. This is the worst I've, I've, I think I've, I was for a while. Like I was so, I was purple. Everything was purple. My feet were purple. I was about ready to die. I was so strung out. I was, I was so bad people. I was so bad. You could see the hurt in my eyes. You could see the, the death glare already happening. And again, for some reason, I started looking at my pictures and my son's you know, and, and I think God, I know it's God that, that he saw my, my, he saw my weariness, he saw my tiredness.
and and he he gave me a chance um by the grace of god i was about ready to die i was about ready to jump out that window i was super overdosed i was super riddled with demons i was super riddled with hate with with so much I don't know how to explain it. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. I was about ready to die. I had turned my back on my family, my life, uh, my job, everything, everything. I was ready to die, ready to die, ready to die. In Jesus' name, I, I got through. I got through. I got through. I got through. I got through, I made it out. By the grace of God, the devil was about ready to take me. The devil was about ready to take me, you know? Lord forbid. Lord forbid. need to pause for a little bit because this is getting pretty intense many people don't realize what we go through you know it's 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 tough this life is tough the, the enemy has so many weapons so many things to to lure you into you know drugs you know addiction um self-love all these things I, I struggle with homosexuality um anger um depression anxiety he uses all these things repeatedly and 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 some of us don't make it some of us don't make it you know i'm sorry to say some of us do not make it we do not have god in our life you know why am i special why am i special i'm not god saw something in me it's it's not me at all i was a piece of dung i was so bad i was so disgusting yet god saw something in me all glory to God. Now, if I if I if I sit here and I name how many times I try to kill myself and how many times I went to rehab and how many times I hurt my family and how many times I hurt my parents <laughs> and how many times I neglected my children, we'd be here all day. We'd be here all day. That's the type of person I was. So I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna skip uh, through some of. The <laughs> Some of them because there was a lot. There was a lot, people. Like I said, there was a lot. There was a lot. There was a lot. I can't name all of them. I'm sorry. I, I just want to let you know that, that I was a piece of dung. I did so many bad things. Um, I'm so grateful now that I have God because he sees the, the way things were going, that it was leading to death. Um, my sin was leading me to death. To death. Um, given this last this last story is going to be the last one of, of hurt and then it's going to be um, progressive you know this last story let's go this is where Jesus saved me this is this was an an absolute he was there he saved me in Jesus name this this was when um this was when when I was working in construction and 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 my wife we were we were doing good and, and then all of a sudden you know I got um, I got back into into drugs um, given remember there's always been bits and pieces where I've been uh, sober where I've been clean this this one was um, I was not sober I did a year, no drugs, but, but I was still drinking, you know, I was working construction, I was drinking, um, and then I, I, I got back into to meth, um, I started smoking it, and it was nothing, it was nothing, I started, uh, you know, sniffing it, and it was nothing for like a week, I, you know, I was surprised, I was like, hey, I don't have any, I don't have any urges, I don't have anything, and then, um, and then it, it just came in like a flood. It came in like a flood one night. Um, 
I guess it was it was noticeable and, and my wife noticed the smell or something or something you know I was off I was off um, I was I was trying to be you know I was trying to be discreet about it but but it was it was obvious that I smelled that I reeked that I that I had been doing drugs and it had been like a week so she kicked me out and me out of rage and anger I just left and I stormed out and and the first night I think I was just driving and I was just driving I was just driving whatever the next day um, the next day I was just walking the creek I was just walking the creek I walked like the whole most of the creek just strung out on meth and um, I went to my parents house and I went there and I said if I could shower and shave and, and they said yeah you know like I showered and shaved there and then I left and then um, I I spoke to the devil I said hey devil I'm here I have nothing Do, give me your best shot you know like I was I challenged the devil okay I'm here you know I, I wanted to die again I'm here I had my whole life set up beforehand I'm here. I don't. I don't want to live anymore. Um, come, you know, do your best shot. So, his best shot was was me going to the creek and you know finding endless amount of drugs, finding other people there, um, and I decided to stay there. I decided you know and being there there was things that I did there was things that you know I'm clarifying up now everything was my accountability I did everything that whatever happened there it was on me um, regardless of the fact the whole time I was there I was thinking about my family you know I kept thinking about my family I kept thinking about my family I kept thinking about my family and in this whole thing, um, I had a dream, and and it wasn't it wasn't legit. I know it wasn't legit because because uh, there was fear, there was there was it was a different kind of spirit. I dreamed of the the Catholic image of the Virgin Mary, but it was pain. It was it was it was not godly, you know. Um, since then. I've been tripped out like okay I had a I had a dream of Virgin Mary and she's not my friend you know she's not someone to pray with and I thought that was a message you know that was a message like hey this is what this is one of your strongholds you know because I grew up a Catholic and that was one of my strongholds you know like I'm not gonna get into to all that like Catholicism um, to me is not biblical um, it's not biblical to me you have to have a relationship with Jesus you have to love Jesus Christ and make him your Lord and Savior um, Catholic Church does graven images to saints and 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 Mary and and Jesus and, and none of that is biblical the Ten Commandments aren't you know they changed the the I believe the second one from uh, having graven images to um, something else uh, but but I had that that dream um, and, and I was there for four days four days I had so much fear so much anger so much um, lost lostness you know I was so lost I was so lost I was so lost I was so depressed I had so much anxiety I had so much um, sadness you could see the sadness in my eyes um you could see death in my eyes again this time you could see death so badly in my eyes i kid you not people death was on my tail and and after being there and and you know having all these all these things that that i thought were pl 
pleasurable in my, in my mind from drugs you know like i said drugs uh open this this gateway to to you wanting to do um and and making things uh more more uh i guess normal um but it's just a state of mind that that is nasty it's 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 a it's a nastiness and it's it's a, a demonic spirit it's a it's something not of god um so i was there for four days like i said i challenged the enemy i challenged the enemy i challenged him and i said do your best shot and he did he gave me he gave me unlimited drugs he gave me a place to stay he gave me a although it was in the creek and it was you know a homeless i guess encampment what you may say and deep down i was not okay with that deep down i think god planted the seed he was knocking hey you know i'm here and and i did i i ran away i ran away from the encampment because I knew, you know, I knew that, that this was not my life. This was not going to be my life. Four days. It took me four days to realize that, that my life, my love was for my family. From, from what the enemy kept tempting me with. You know, drugs. You know, uh, freedom to do whatever you want. No responsibilities. No nothing. I was out there in the wilderness. Um... And he gave me everything that I thought I was searching for in life, you know, unlimited drugs, unlimited, all this uh, uh, perversion, all this stuff. And I snapped out of it. I snapped out of it. I ran away. It took me four days, guys, to realize that, that life life is, is, is not about drugs and not about um, the enemy. It's not. Life is beautiful. So I, I, I ran off and I remember getting on my knees and praying. I said, Lord, I said, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. And, and like a flood, I felt something just rush. And I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit drugged out. It cleared my mind. It cleared my mind. I remember this day, day in, day out. This was the strongest presence of the Lord I've had you know, you know, by far, um, I felt the Holy Spirit just come and, and I felt this strength and I felt this courage and I was just walking up and down the, the creek, you know, praying, you know, Padre Nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre, like in, in a high pitch, like in a high tone, like, like, like I was saved, you know, um, it was such a beautiful experience. Like, no matter how defeated you think you are, no matter how defeated the enemy thinks that he has you, God, forgive me. Three words. He rushed in, rescued me. I texted my wife, come help me. Come get me. Something like that. My parents come. My parents come. They, they find me. They find me. I'm still in this in this zone. Like, hey, I'm still in a good zone. I get home. You know, the enemy tries to attack me as I'm leaving. The enemy tries to attack me um, spiritually. You know, I, I get home um, the whole the whole night. I have a hard time sleeping. I have a hard time sleeping. I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm telling the enemy, you know, like, get out, I, I, I'm, you're a defeated foe, uh, I kept praying, I, I didn't know how to pray yet that well, you know, I just kept talking directly to him, you know, you're a defeated foe, uh, please, you know, like, leave me, like, like, and then there was, there was times where I was bold and like, leave me, I, I've, you know, you're a defeated foe, uh, I kept saying Padre Nuestro in, in Spanish, you know, the whole time, and, and I was sure, I was sure, that that God had saved me, you know, I was sure, but I didn't know yet. I didn't know yet. He he unravels himself little by little by little, you know. Uh, and it was it was just a beautiful experience. Like 
I had gone from, from being in the creek to have given up on life to restarting the thinking process of how I'm going to rebuild myself. How I'm going to rebuild myself. You know? I, I had it in my mind already. Hey, my wife's going to leave me. I'm not going to have... I'm not going to have... Uh, I'm not going to be able to see my children for a while. I had already thought about that in my thinking process and I was still thinking of rebuilding. I was like, let's go, let's go, let's go to rehab. I was ready. I was ready. Let's go to rehab. Let's do this. This time in rehab, you know, I started reading the Bible and the enemy would attack me. The enemy would attack me. He would make me, um, well, he wouldn't make me like he would put things in my, my head, like, like in the, in the, in the rehab place, I would tell people that I, I would do things that, that I didn't really do. And, and it was just this lying spirit that, that I had to get out. It was a lying spirit. And I don't know why, like, like, and I would even defend the, the LGBTQ community. Like, Hey, like if they were saying something like that, I would, I would defend it. Like, like this, this homosexual spirit was still lingering. And, and I was just a lying spirit still. I was a lying spirit. I was, I had encountered God, but I still had these, these spirits that I hadn't been delivered of, you know? Um, and I would still masturbate. I would still masturbate in the, in, in, in the place, you know? So, so I had experienced God, but, but I hadn't fully, um, experienced like the, the spiritual warfare or anything like that it was like a hint it, he came to rescue me over three words god forgive me so this next year i got into scripture and i was doing good i was doing good but i still had all these uh spirits of lying spirits of 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 you know of pride all these all these different spirits that that i did i wasn't aware of um so i was good for a year i was good for a year bam another year um i fall again into drugs start doing you know bad things I, but this time i feel so much remorse and so much conviction that i i tell my wife right away you know and it wasn't it wasn't cool what i did or, or whatnot it was definitely not cool it's definitely um very bad but but i felt convicted i felt convicted i felt again you know like my life has has been of just lying and deceit and 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 of hiding things and and I'm not gonna do that no more. I, I told my wife what I did and and it is what it is, you know? For some reason God kept us together. I don't know I don't know if, I don't know on her end to be honest. I don't know what she sees in me. I don't know why she's with me. Um all I know is that God has us together and, and I married her and, and that's that's what it is i love her and that's what it is you know um it's hard it's hard it's hard god gives me so many chances god's given me so many chances he knows i can do better he knows that i can restore my family he knows um that i have the the capability that that i have the holy spirit now so after that time i messed up so i was clean for a year after the 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 creek incident after that rehab and i was clean a year and then again i fell in 2018 i believe and that my friends was the last time i have touched drugs um in jesus name that was the last time that was the last time october 2018 October 2018, I admitted my wrongs. I cleared my chest. I I said what I had to say. And I just let it be. I let it be. It's in God's hands. Everything is in God's hands. I pray every day, you know. If if I were to lose everything today and I still have God, I'd be so happy. Like the, the time where I went back to rehab, I was in my mind. I said... I don't care if I lose everything. I don't care if I lose everything. I'm going to rebuild myself. I'm going to be better no matter for what. If I'm going to have to be a good co-parent, 
that's what I'm going to do. If I'm going to have to be a good, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, if I'm going to have to be a good brother, good, good uh, son, I'm going to have to do it. There's so much damage that I did that it's barely manifesting now the goodness, you know? I did so much damage to my family, to my wife, to everybody that two years later, it's barely manifesting that they're, I hope they're seeing that what Christ has done in my life is changing me for good. This is not, this is not a one year fall back into drugs type thing. This has been two years. This has been two years solid two years solid, faithful, uh, no lying. Um, uh, I've had, um, I'm just being honest, I've, I've done uh, uh, lies on paperwork and stuff like that, and it came back to bite me. So, so that's some things that we got to um, take in consideration, you know. Um, we got to be fully honest 100%, you know. I can't sit here and, and and tell you that that I'm sinless. I do sin way less. Physical sin, I've completely, you know, shut it out. I think in the past two years I've I've masturbated two times and those those were those were um um I had to pray I had to pray over it and, and I've been strong after that, you know. In this past two years I've been faithful, I've been um I've been so deep into the word. I've been so deep into the Lord. I've been so deep into into prophetic messages, into 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 just to just Jesus. Jesus is the one that makes everything happen. It wasn't no no rehab place. It wasn't no meeting. It wasn't no intervention. It wasn't no building. It was no um, religion. It's always been Jesus he's always had a plan for me you know whether I can reach my drug addicted folks whether I can reach my 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 homosexual uh, brothers and sisters whether I can reach my promiscuous brothers and sisters whether I can reach anybody anybody you know and and life comes at a risk you know some of you are gonna take this and and judge judge me judge me judge me throw rocks at me um we have a choice of of how our life is and how we will um be so throw all the rocks you you got i don't care i'm shielded by the blood of jesus i got a covering by the blood of jesus he has saved me he you know, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Jesus. So why am I not going to glorify him? Why am I not going to glorify him? I, I would, if it weren't for Jesus, I'd be in the grave right now, dead. So you could think whatever you want about me. You could think the unimaginable. You can think that I'm still a hypocrite. You could think that I'm still a liar. You could think that I'm still uh a cheater you could still think that that I'm still a homosexual you could still think that that I'm still a drug addict I don't care today was a gift from God and I'm here living it living proof that Jesus is real like I said I could be karate chopping the air doing backflips at the intersection asking y'all for a dollar but what am I doing right now praising God thank you Jesus Hallelujah. No matter how far we think we, we veered off from the path, Jesus leaves the 99 and comes for that one. I was that one. I was that one. I, like I said, I could lose everything right now. Everything, everything, everything. Put me back in, put me in a little box. I'd be content because I have Jesus in my heart. How do I know that? I've been able to stop doing everything destructive in my life. Everything. 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 You know? I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. 
sometimes you know the enemy comes he, he'll tempt us he'll he'll throw this in your mind he'll let's let's get it let's get it straight all your thoughts are not organic they're not there's a lot of generational curses that you guys are battling that you don't know that you don't even know about and you need to pray against and you got to pray against witchcraft. You got to pray against evil eye. You got to pray against um, charms. You got to pray against all these things. You got to learn. Jesus shows up and, and he shows you his love. But then there's, there's skills that you need to get. In order for me to stay in this narrow path, I got to build my, my armor up. You know? First, it was experience Jesus' love and grace. That's the given. That's the first thing that, that drew me to him. Then it's like, hey, I have his love and grace, but I'm still getting attacked. I still have these uh, spiritual warfare type things. And it led me to be like, hey, I want to be a soldier for God. I want to engage the enemy. There, there's, a, there's a lot of YouTube videos. There's a lot of uh, books that you can read. Just, just do the research. Spiritual warfare. How to pray against witchcraft. How to pray against the enemy. You know? Build your arsenal. Build your arsenal. Um, and like I said, no one is perfect. We do, we, we do sin, but we do sin less. And when we sin, we repent. And we try. We try to do that 180. Remember, God rewards us for Intent. Intent. He always looks at our intentions. He's he's a merciful and wonderful God, but we got to be obedient. We got to be obedient. Once we receive the Holy Spirit, he ingrains us with the law in our heart. So like I said, you have no excuse. You'll know right from wrong every decision after you receive the Holy Spirit, which makes your decisions much better. And that just makes it really simple. You know, if you feel convicted in your heart that you're doing something bad, go and fix it. And, and like I said, I'm just here, I'm just dust. I'm dust. You know, I've made so many mistakes. I've done so much harm. I'm just dust. The only good in me is Jesus Christ. The only good in me is Jesus Christ. And I can, and I can love everybody now. I can forgive everybody now. It's nothing. What we need in this world is realness. If we start sharing realness rather than this fake garbage that that your poop doesn't stink, that, that, that you never go through anything, that you're perfect, come on, that's not real, you know? We all battle demons, we all, uh, we're all human, we all feel, we all hurt. Um, Jesus is, is, is the Lord of peace, you know? Like I told you, he is the Lord of peace because I could lose everything and I'd still this, have this peace of mind like in my heart i still got you jesus um persecution is coming to christians you know um we gotta be ready we gotta be equipped um learn how to pray the lord's prayer you know uh psalms are are so wonderful get into the word you know um the past two years have been so magnificent he's been manifested in, in me he's shown doors that 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 i could never imagine you know and I still go through things. I still go through things. But I have that peace in mind. I have that peace in mind. I have Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And nothing is better than that. Praise God. All glory to Jesus Christ for saving my life. All glory to Jesus Christ for seeing something in me that I never wanted to see. You know? If it were up to me, I'd be dead. And he saved me. He saved me. That's, that's realness. You know, so, so so stop overthinking what you did in your past. Like I said in, in one of my previous videos, you know, you become a new creature. You are reborn. And it doesn't matter what anybody says, you know, you have the armor of God. We can we can righteously judge, you know, and the Bible says you got to take that splinter out of your eye and then righteously judge someone else. So so if I had this telephone pole splinter in my eye, you know, of all the past mistakes that I have, and I take it out, does that not give me um, the ability to tell you, hey, I went through this, let me help you, you know? 
that what you're doing is damaging yourself. What you're doing is detrimental to your health, to your mental state, to everything that, that is good for your life. Tell me, is that not a good thing? I had a telephone pole splinter in my eye. You know, I could just imagine that all my sins, all my mistakes, all my sinful nature was that telephone pole in my eye and Jesus helped me pluck it out. Now I want to help you pluck it out. If that's not love, I don't know what is. I want you to have eternal life. I want you to be good in Jesus' name. And that's my life, you know? Um, like I said, I don't know everybody's agenda. I can discern spirits. I can discern motives. But at the end of the day, I don't know everything, you know? I have, I have, uh, I have fruits of the Holy Spirit, you know? I produce good fruit now instead of rotten fruit. Do you guys know what good fruit is? It's good actions. It's good behavior. Rather than, than if I'm just talking this, if I'm just uh, doing verbiage and there's no fruits to, to correlate with, with my verbiage. If I were here to talk to you about God all day and there's no, no fruits for me to produce, that's a hypocrite. You know, if I'm still living in sin and I'm here talking to you about God, that's a hypocrite. But I'm striving to be better every day, every day in the name of Jesus, you know. So get filled with the Holy Spirit. Discern from right and wrong. You know, God, God is, is, is so merciful and, and gracious and, and loving. I, I know he, he, he judges, but... But my goodness, if, if you ever encounter his, his love, there is second to none. He is the great I am, Alpha, Omega, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He's Lord of Lords. I don't care what happens in this life anymore. You know, he is in control of my life here. So I know all things will be good. And if all things will be good in this life, then that means that I will have a rewarding eternal life. <laughs> so turn from your sin. I'm letting you know where I'm, I, I came from. I'm letting you know the, the demons I battled. I know for sure you're battling some demons. And I know for sure you need some prayer at some point in your life. If at some point in your life you're tired of being tired, uh, I could pray for you. I will pray for you. DM me, um, message me, text me, whatever. I'll pray for you. If you want to be delivered, I could set something up. We could we could do some prayer. I'm a prayer word for Christ now. Um, you wanna? I ha I'm in a ministry right now of spirit-filled Christians. I could send you the the, the Zoom link. You know, it's it's not a big it's not a big issue, but you got to want to to step up and say I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Take over my life. I am nothing but dust, Lord God. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit. I love you. And like I said, people, I don't care what none of y'all think. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if I lose everything. If I lose everything for this video and this video reaches at least two people, hallelujah. I'm telling you, live right. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. For tomorrow is never promised. I hope any of you get any little bit of message in this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. God bless. In Jesus' name.